As you will appreciate, the fact that another 50 members of the police force are going to be trained in an area that they were not trained in before means that, of course, a policeman is more than merely a policeman. This training has to do with environmental protection. And largely, we have come to realize that policemen will do law enforcement to the extent of catching criminals, as we know, who the, their categorizations, like robbers, murders, rapists, people who steal, and so on. But more and more, as our society gets sophisticated, and as our society gets more complicated, it is necessary that the policeman becomes a far different creature that we have associated him with, or her with. And that's why this training is happening. A policeman, in a way, has to be a doctor in certain fraud cases, an accountant. A policeman has to be one who has some expertise in writing properly to the extent of uh, like being an English teacher. And he has to be a social worker, depending on his circumstances. And that is why, indeed, it is an extremely challenging profession, but one profession that you know, ought to be respected. Because it's all manner of activities and all spheres of knowledge that a policeman should involve himself with so that he can be not jack of all trades, but master of all trades. And that's the best policeman that we can have. And how we go about getting the best, it is training. But a training that will come from the senior ranks and the, the various units that we want you to have the training in, like in this case, the EPA, that authority, we also want that you, those who are going to be receiving the training, also to have a sense of self-initiative individually so that you can read on to know more on the subject and not simply feel that one training session is all and then you go back being the um, more or less person you were. We want an evolution, as it were. And so I am happy then this morning to see you coming out in full force. I understand there are about 50 persons who are going to get the training, uh, policemen, and from all divisions who are here. Thanks for coming out. I want to make the point that this noise nuisance is a form of environmental pollution. It makes life for the victims very difficult, annoying. You get provoked. You might want to react sometimes, not reasonably, but violently. And more and more, as we try as best as possible to make people li live happy lives, we find that there are some culprits in our society who, for a variety of reasons, including increasing their profits, make life very difficult for other members of our society. As you know, our legal structure is platformed, and you can do what you want. It's a free society, but do not hurt others. That's the caveat. That's our common law tradition. That's our constitutional principle. Do what you want. You're free. But do not harm or hurt others. And this thing, noise nuisance, has to then, to that extent, be prohibited because it affects, it hurts, it injures others. And we need laws and we need personnel who will enforce the laws 
to ensure that the people are not hurt or harmed or injured. And that is what this is all about. Just like when someone were to injure, that is wounding, or kill, that is of course homicide, or steal, which is larceny, or, or have sex without consent, rape and all of that, you the policeman quickly go after getting the information and investigate. In this case now, one report, although many are affected by the noise, can mean that you can go and investigate. Our laws make provision for that. And uh, if I may say so at this stage, under the environmental protection, the noise management regulations, we do have uh, certain laws that prohibit these activities. But although we have the laws, and although we have a task force with members that are helping out, this thing is becoming a little more annoying. Guyanese have this culture of wanting to defy everything that stand in their way, and that is what's the problem. So more and more, we have to now make more effective our law enforcement agency. But this piece of training I want you to understand must also go a little further than not merely prosecuting. I would like to see, and I notice at least something in the day's events here, where we want to take the profit out of this illegal activity. And that means that we must start after going through the procedures, ensuring that we can revoke some of the licenses of these bars that play loud music, or the hucksters walking down the street selling their uh, video or their, their tape recordings or whatever, making noise, or the cars of people. And probably it might be better to enforce the law by taking away their equipment. I want to know how people feel about that. And uh, more especially ensuring that if it is a bar, whether it is in Kitty or wheresoever else, that it does not affect other people. And although the Environmental Protection Act talks about people must have sealed soundproof bars if they want uh, to, to, to carry out there and execute on their businesses and make their big profits, Guyanese don't like that. They like the open air. I remember a number of very senior people saying how they're affected by a bar not very far in Main Street there. And of course, because of what you call certain connections to big players, these bars get their permission unhindered. I want policemen to know a thing or two about the laws and how they should be enforced. I also would like you to understand that our information on the matter seeks to integrate better the various agencies that are involved here. And that is why the task force, when it was formed, we wanted to be one central coordinator of the various um, bodies that deal with these matters. Take, for example, the ministry, uh, or you could say the Ghana Police Force. This is the urgency that holds perhaps the greatest public expectation for curbing noise pollution, because, of course, its focus is on law enforcement. But we have others, like the Guyana Police Force, granting permission to open air events where music is played loudly, accompanied by um, other activities, like barbecue and cooking, fire and related. They are responsible for advising whether premises are to be used for the aforementioned, and the, the, whether the events are safe, and so on. This fire service also play a role in an effort
to curb noise nuisance because they could revoke their license not to grant them permission that day to have the barbecue or the fish fry because they're making a lot of noise. And some places get the fish fry and barbecue in such a regular basis. The Ministry of Natural Resources, and that is why we said we have a conjoint uh, event here. There are shops established in the mining area which are a concern in terms of noise nuisance and license being granted to them. This license is granted by the Ministry of Natural Resources at, to these various shops. They got another name. I can't recall the name that they're called. But it is important that all those ministries know the various laws that govern noise nuisance. The important one is Environmental Protection Agency. They have a direct responsibility for noise pollution under the appropriate regulation. The Ministry of Communities, because they have certain supervision authority or supervisory authority over RDCs and NDCs and municipalities, they are a vital partner in disseminating information uh, and so they can have a better knowledge of where and where on a map, that is, that these noise nuisances are occurring. Central Housing and Planning Authority, due to their authority to grant permission for the erection of bars and business premises, they play a vital role to help in the curbing of noise nuisance. And of course, investigating whether a bar or business was granted permission to build. In our Georgetown, where a lot of people live, the main city council has jurisdiction over the municipality to make policies and enforce regulations. And of course, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure and the Guyana Revenue Authority. Many complaints of noise nuisance come from small shops, from people complaining about small shops and bars not licensed to operate. They play some of the loudest music, and they don't have any license, and they continue to play. And though there might be reports to police stations, we find that some of them still continue. So it is a valuable partner that when you now give the information to the GRA, if the GRA could then use its enforcement together with the police force so that at the appropriate time when the next year comes or even immediately, those licenses can be revoked because of their noise levels. As I said, you have a right to do anything except to hurt another. And if your pollution or nuisance hurts another, it is but like stealing from him or injuring him, like with a knife of some sort. So that is why I feel that it is necessary for a police force to understand the various compartments under which certain regulations and rules are applicable. They must now converge, as it were, into one, so that you will know. And when you know, also will appreciate that indeed this is a necessary piece of your work, you too can become better law enforcers as a result of the knowledge that you have in relation to these various compartments that you have to go to. A policeman sometimes hear the noise. You have a practical session that will deal with the the decibel meter reading and all of that. I understand that will be going on later this evening. That's an excellent part of the practical training. But after you do that and you know that this bar does not <coughs> satisfy the decibel readings, it is over and above, you now have to investigate. Did that bar get the GRA permission? Did it get the NDC permission? And all of that can help. All of that is what I understand will be the training about this morning and this afternoon and this evening. I want you as good policemen from all the divisions to take and receive this piece of training on another area of, of important law in Guyana. We have been doing training all across, as you know. The training over the past three years have been enhanced almost tenfold. Lots more training. And that is important. We may not see 
the results overnight. But once it starts seeping in, it gets across. And when you become better policemen because of it, we are going to have law and order out there in the society. Thank you very much. And please pay attention to your lecturers during the course of the day. Thank you.